With any creative process that you really enjoy, there are going to be struggles, challenges, and pitfalls. I know that because over the last two and a half decades of being an artist, I've fallen into a lot of the same traps that you do. And as with every new year, we come up with these resolutions as to what we need for our photography or what we need for our creative process. And I got to tell you that most of the things that we think we need are not what we actually need. What I want to talk about today is what you really need for your photography in 2022. But let's first talk about the things that you don't need. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about that is very controversial is gear. You really don't need more gear. Now, there are definitely pieces of gear that are necessities for getting a certain shot, having a telephoto lens for wildlife photography, ND filters for landscape photography, polarizers for landscape photography, lights for portrait photography. But these pieces of gear are not going to make you a better photographer. All gear does is give you options to get the shots that you want to get. The gear itself will not make better photos. I can promise you that time and time again, because I, even after being a photographer for over two decades, still struggle with the gear trap. I feel like I need more when I start to fall into this pit of self-worth with my artwork, but the gear is not going to fill that hole. The second thing that you really don't need in your photography is scripted camera settings. Okay. Now I remember when I first started photography, I used to follow all of these big photographers and I would look at their camera settings when they would display them, their exit data. And I'd write them down in this book and I take this book with me on location and say, okay, I'm photographing a waterfall. I need to be at F eight or F 16. This person used F 11 and I need to be at ISO. Uh, and then when my exposure is not lining up, and then I would get into this struggle where I was trying to copy somebody else's settings for a very specific waterfall or portrait or whatever that might be. And I wouldn't get the same shot they did. And I get so frustrated with myself. Like, why don't I understand these camera settings? Really, at the end of the day, camera settings are just a matter of doubling and having and making sure that you get things sharp when you need it sharp or blurry when you need it blurry. <laughs> it's really simple. So don't get stuck in this trap of, well, what were your camera settings? I need to know your camera settings. You don't need that either. The third thing that you really don't need is more software. Now I used to collect software as almost as if it was like a badge of honor to say that I had all these different pieces of software from all these different companies. And I used to use every single one of them in order to make a great picture. But the truth is back in 2018, I completely wiped my slate clean and said, no more software, Blake, you don't need any more. Double down on Photoshop, learn it, get really good at it. And the only things you're going to use are Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop. Now for you Lightroom users, Lightroom is perfectly acceptable because that's the equivalent of Adobe Camera Raw. Once I did that, I started to enjoy my artistic process even more because I was removing all the clutter. I was getting all that clutter out of my brain and I was saying, this is the track that you need to be on. So we talked about all the things that you don't need more of in your photography. Let's talk about the one thing that you really need in your photography. You're not going to like this at all. It's artistic vision. Oh, Blake, why would you going to bring up this artistic crap? I don't need any of that. I'm not an artist. Well, guess what? <laughs> you decided to pick up a camera. You decided to have a hobby in photography or even a profession in photography, and you are making art. You're an artist, accept it. But one of the things that comes along with that is artistic vision. And now you're probably saying to yourself, well, I'm not an artist. I don't have artistic vision. That's not true. You do have vision. It's there because the moment you picked up your camera and decided to take a picture, there was something that happened in your brain that said, you want to remember this and you want to record this. And then once you started editing that, there was a certain feeling that you started to put into that image because you wanted other people to experience that as well. That's artistic vision. It's having an idea for something and pursuing that idea. That's all artistic vision is. Now I'm going to show you three images here from three different genres of photography where my vision beat my camera. Okay. So this is the first one. This was actually taken just a couple days ago. I was at the Lowe's Bluffs National Wildlife Preserve in Northern Missouri. And I saw this beautiful, beautiful hawk sitting on a log right in front of me. Now I had obviously a 200 to 600 lens on my Sony a one camera. Of course I'm bringing up gear, but I don't want you to feel pressure with that gear. I had the gear that I needed to get the shot, but this is what the camera produced. Now, if you look at this image, it's not too bad. I had my exposure, right? Uh, for the, the lighting. So I didn't have anything blown out. Nothing was too dark, but this was the resulting image that my camera gave me. It's nothing fantastic. 
But this is the final image after I processed it. Notice the difference. There is a striking difference between how this image feels and how it makes the viewer feel when they see it. And I wouldn't have got to this point with this photograph if I didn't have a vision for it. When I was on location, I recorded the fact that the oranges and the glow that was all around it was absolutely gorgeous. And I wanted to photograph this hawk on that background, but make the viewer feel what I felt when this hawk looked directly into my lens and studied me. I needed to use my artistic vision for this piece to make the viewer, you, feel what I felt when I was there. Here's another great example. This final image that you're seeing here was the back of our Christmas card for 2021. And I wanted the people who received this to really feel a warm, welcoming invite from the Rudis family. But if you saw the image that I got directly from my camera, this was the image straight out of camera. I had a problem here, you see. We didn't necessarily prepare things enough for this photo shoot. We tried to get a photographer to do it for us and we just didn't have anybody available. So we had to make do with what we had. So I had a vision for this piece. We're in our bedroom <laughs> on a blank wall. And I remember telling my wife, don't worry about it. I'll put something behind it. I'll make it nice and warm and cozy and inviting. It was my artistic vision that made this image, not my camera. Here's another phenomenal example. I'm at the top of Rocky Mountain National Park in the tundra area. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've got orange over here. I've got blue over here. It's just a fantastic landscape environment. Absolutely gorgeous. Again, I've got my gear, my Sony A1 with a wide angle lens on it. And I take the picture and I looked at it and I was really disheartened knowing that my camera couldn't get this. This is what I felt. This is what I saw. And in reality, because some people will say, well, Blake, that's not reality. I like the original image better. Well, okay, guess what? The camera is not even producing reality. The gear isn't even producing reality. Why? Because there were multiple different white balances that were happening. There are multiple different colors that were happening here that one white balance just couldn't capture. The oranges, the blues, I recorded that. I remember that. I had to make you feel what I felt with that magnificent glowing magenta blue in the upper left hand corner and that gorgeous sun just blasting its light across with all of its radiating orange eminence. Guess what? Camera can't do that. Camera settings can't do that. But vision can do that. Now, I know a lot of people struggle with this artistic vision thing, and I get it 100% because when you first hear about it, it's so high level meta stuff that you just don't want to deal with it. So what I'm doing is an artistic vision summit. And this summit starts on January 27th and it goes through February 10th. What I'm going to be doing during this time is taking three topics, tone, color, and three truths that I want you to believe. And I'm going to break them up into three different live events, all about probably about 45 minutes to an hour piece, depending on how many questions I get. This will be a live presentation. In the first presentation, I'm going to talk about tone and how the tones your image relate directly to your artistic vision and how understanding your vision can help you sculpt those tones to make the viewer feel what you felt while you direct them through the image. The second topic is going to be on colors and how your artistic vision is directly related to the colors in your photograph. Because what are we trying to do here? We're trying to make the viewer feel what we feel in the image. And what tool do we have to do that that's best? Color. We see color every day all around us. And many of those colors even alter what we eat on a daily basis. Just look at fast food signs. In the last and final live event on February 10th, I'm going to be talking about three truths that I want you to believe right now so that your artistic vision can be so much better in 2022. You see, there's lies that you're being told right now that you're probably even telling yourself right now. I'm going to give you permission to stop listening to those lies and believe these three truths for yourself so that you can make better images in 2022. Now, if you're watching this video after February 10th, 2022, you missed the boat. So register today. This Artistic Vision Summit is a completely free series and you can get registered at the link in the description below here on YouTube or at the card that you're gonna see at the end of the video. Listen, if you ask 15 different photographers what their photography really needs, they're all gonna give you a different response. Some of them might touch on artistic vision and some of them might not even think of it at all. In my personal opinion, finding your artistic vision is gonna be the number one thing that is going to make you better images in 2022. Not more gear, not more understanding of camera settings, and not more software. It's your vision. Tap into that first and you're gonna be so shocked as to what you are capable of doing with your artwork. So what are you waiting on? Click on the description below or click right here and you can get registered for the Artistic Vision Summit starting January 27th through February 10th. Three different webinars, can't wait to see you there.